I had Dr. Justin Terry on my podcast today. He's a superintendent in Forty ISD. And one of the things that I was just blown away by was as a superintendent of a public school district, they created this space called the OC. And you can see it in the link down below at the OC.net. And their whole premise was how do we actually innovate inside the constraints? And how do we actually create something that people will aspire to do? A lot of times it's really easy to go into places and say like, hey, we need to like tear down education, rebuild because this is not working. And that's an easy thing for someone outside of the profession to say, and then walk away and not have to deal with the consequences of, you know, not meeting certain standards, things like that too. My whole premise on the idea of innovate inside the box is actually saying like, we can do really incredible things right now and waiting for someone else to do it for you is not going to actually make it happen. And what I love about what I've seen with the OC, with Dr. Terry's work, with the work that they're doing in Forney ISD is they've created something with inside the constraints. They got the community really excited about it, really backing them up. And now other people are saying, we need our schools to be more like this. They created something within the constraints and now it's actually changing the system with inside. I just thought it was such a good conversation. You're going to love what you're about to hear today. It's really going to challenge you, push you, really kind of thinking about how we innovate inside the box, create something that other people aspire to do in public education. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I have the legendary superintendent, Justin Terry from Forney ISD. Forney, I, I absolutely, people know this about me. I love Texas. Nicest people in the world are, are from Texas. I just really, is such a pride in the state. I just love going there every time. I actually had the privilege of working with Forney. Forney was probably one of the school districts that really kind of embraced the book Innovators Mindset when it first came out. So I like I always have a little special place in my heart. Uh, Justin is actually currently, as I said, the superintendent, but he's done a, a ton of different roles, doing some really innovative things, really kind of pushing the boundaries of what can be done in education, even though still got to work within certain rules, got to do some compliance stuff that's maybe not the most fun, but you got to do it. So before we kind of get into that, Justin, if you can just tell everyone who you are, what you do today and how you got there, great place to start. Sure. You know, uh, thanks for having me, George. Um, you know, I, I do. We, we got to get you back to Forney is, is the, right. is the next right. step. All right. But uh, now this is my um, 11th year in, in, in Forney and seventh year as a superintendent and just blessed to be here in this incredible community. Uh, you know, I was a, a math teacher and coach early on and got, you know, moved into leadership, um, you know, for, for many years of my career, but uh, this is by far the, my favorite chair. It's, it's kind of a fun one to sit in. You get to do some, some really impactful things for community and, 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 and kids. You know, so this is, there's one thing we kind of connect about this and I know there's like a new center that you yeah. kind of open and this is something I'm really passionate about. I, and I don't know, maybe I'm kind of putting words in your mouth here. One of the things I'm really, really, I like this whole concept of innovation of the box. My kind of belief in this is that, you know what? I, I don't ever tell people, Hey, like, just do what you think is right. Don't worry about standardized no. tests, all that other stuff, because that's like a really, I, I feel is unfair of me. Cause it's like, well, it doesn't matter to me cause I'm leaving. Right. And so it doesn't put people. So it's like, Hey, you have to still address those things. You have to do those things. But what you're trying to do is create something within those constraints that other people will say, you know what, we should actually be doing more of that and actually creating the example. And I think, you know, having a conversation. So, Talk about that center, you know, kind of some of the things that, that are happening, you know, in Forney, how you're really kind of pushing the boundaries of what education can be while still kind of acknowledging there are constraints that we have to adhere to because that's how it works. Yeah. And George, your work, honestly, has had a, a, a huge impact on our community, whether you know it or not. And, um, you know, it was before you even uh, uh, wrote. I didn't know that. <laughs> It, yeah, thank you she, you know uh, it was it was a really the innovators mindset that kind of laid the foundation for some of what our values are here and one of them is dream big make it happen um and you know within that you know we don't one of the things that we don't do here is ever talk about innovation outside the box but one of the underlying uh you know values here in formula as i was saying is in, is innovation in fact we we build two roads our our, our vision statement is inspiring students through innovative education. And what, uh, 
uh, Opportunity Central, which you just described, um, sits uh, where innovation meets inspiration. And, you know, what we did with that facility is try and do something from an educational standpoint that, that has never been done before. And uh, we integrated really what I call the three C's, uh, uh, career, college, and community all into one space. Um, and so it's a 350,000 square foot facility, um, but we actually invite and welcome. Uh, it's the public in um, seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. at night. Um, because we believe that, you know, education and, and what we can do uh, will be enhanced if we can really begin to integrate our community in um, with our kids and uh, the experiences that they can bring. And so uh, we, we understand there's constraints that we have to work within, uh, but if we can be successful with one thing, then, then maybe those, that, that success would begin to change and morph the box itself. Um, and so we built a, basically a, a mall on the first floor, if you can believe it, just a quick description. Love You guys welcome to go see it at the, the OC.net. Um, but a mall on the first floor where we bring in businesses um, and they lease space from us. We've created our own businesses. We just bought two franchises as a school district. Uh, ultimately, what we're trying to do is get our kids an opportunity to experience uh, careers and entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial skills uh, within the real world and the workplace. Um, it's got a 7,900 seat arena in the middle of it. Um, and then we basically That's built so a cool. two-story career and college center on top. And so it's, uh, man, it's, it's something, uh, we never don't know of any facility like it in the nation. Uh, and it's operating like nothing we've ever seen in the nation. It's, it's really been a big hit in this community and for our kids. Well, you know, and that we were talking about this, you, you've actually had people from out of state coming to visit to see what you're doing, which is absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I, I love it. It's the OC.net. Is that where it is? Yeah. The OC, T H E O C.net. I love it. Um, oh. And uh, site visits are available on there if you'd love to have people out just to kind of help tell our story. But more than that, like you said, I mean, the, the concept that they could just take one little small thing right. and take it into their community and they begin to transform uh, for their kids. So, this is, you know, I know probably other people are wondering this too. And one of the really hard things is to do something. It's funny because I talk about innovation in two, two places, right? Iteration and invention, right? So iteration is like taking something that we've done before, just evolving it, changing it to actually become better. But sometimes it's, you know, doing something that's never been done before, which is way more challenging because there's always a concern. Well, if, how do we know it works? How do we know this is going to be actually beneficial? So when you're kind of going through that process of designing it, how did you get... And like, when I say community, I'm not talking just families. I'm not talking businesses. I'm talking to your teachers, your students. How did yeah. you kind of get everyone to, and I, and I'm sure I shouldn't say everyone. Cause I'm sure somebody was like, this is going to be a stupid idea. <laughs> There's gotta be at least one, right? There's gotta be at least one. Always, always, okay. always. Just maybe yeah. one or two. Right. Yeah. And so how did you get people to kind of come together and support that process too? Because I think, you know, as much as it's, powerful to be visionary you can't just some of the things i've seen fail weren't the wrong idea but the implementation or bringing people together wasn't done properly so then it's right. almost people regressed you know 10 steps backwards because you're like surprise guess what we're doing and they're like no nah, it's nothing like we did so i don't want it right so how did you get people to kind of support that build it together how did you kind of go through that process you know it's such a good question and, and i'll be honest with you you're probably going to laugh at the answer as I tell it, but uh, you know, what our community wanted was we're extremely fast growth. I mean, uh, fastest growing city in tech in the nation, fastest growing county in the nation right now. Um, and so we, we had a, a facilities committee come together and, and one of their passions was, which most communities are uh, college and career for our students. And they wanted a college and career center. Uh, so we were blessed to, to be able to kind of create and design off of that. Uh, but what we were able to value add to that, um, we really took it to the next level and it was not the traditional. And because of that, uh, we couldn't roll it out like the traditional, um, you know, when you're going to, you know, allow businesses to come in and your people to be able to mall walk all day while your kids are having school, uh, it's, it's hmm. different, and unique. And so ironically, we took a, a box, um, to kind of kick this off. Right. I told you, you've got a lot of foundation here, no, man. You man. Just don't know it. But uh, 
we took a six by six wooden box and we just painted the OC on it and put it on a trailer and just started plopping it all around our community. Uh, and then um, just the That's opposite crazy. of what any administrator should ever do. We intentionally ask one question, what's inside the box. And we are trying to create a rumor mill on social media. <laughs> um, yeah. So with that, we get everything from, you know, aliens to who knows whatever else are inside the box, but it created an excitement and a buzz that allowed us to begin to tell our story of really what's good for kids and what could happen within a facility when we really put kids in an experience on a daily basis. Um, and, and, and they bought into this concept. Um, and then we were able to put them inside the facility. And once you walk it, you feel it, um, you understand that, um, you know, this is what education should look like. And what we believe is the next generation of education. Um, there's a lot of, honestly, I got more adult eyes on kids in that building than any other school I've got in this um, entire school district. So it's beginning to tell its own story within our businesses. We're seeing something really unique too. I think pub ed gets a really bad rap right now. Uh, I think we all see that. Um, but when I've got, you know, pine and Ivy every day doing um, Facebook lives and they're a home decor and lighting store inside the OC, uh, she's telling the incredible story of what our kids are doing for her helping to her market and, and advertise. Uh, so not only are we trying to tell our story, but our community's doing it. And as our community's walking around our building, they're seeing how talented and incredible our kids are every day from the inside out and not from the outside in. And it's making a real impact on our community, but I think also Texas and hopefully the nation. Well, I, I and I, first of all, I appreciate because a lot of people, this has been my mentality, right? Like. We're gonna in within public education. I believe like people would want to be a part of us. We're gonna create something where people like want to be a part of that. And you yeah. are, are obviously doing that. Um, one of the questions that's kind of popping into my mind. So, and I don't know if this is the right terminology, but in the mentality is that you probably still have like traditional high school, like a traditional school. How has this process maybe changed some of the things they're doing within those structures? Right, like. Cause, cause probably some people are like, I want to be at this space and, uh, but I'm here. So like, how does that changing things like throughout the district, even though you have this one space, like how does that kind of help push further some of the opportunities for students, no matter where they are in your district? So we actually have two high schools, comprehensive high schools. And um, one is um, this also helped to kind of tell the story on how things are going to operate, but one's, one's blue uh, and one's gold. And so the OC colors are green. Um, and so our, our kids come together in that facility and it is, um, so they're getting all to experience this if they'd like to. This isn't like an academy that they apply to come into. We accept and open our doors to all. Um, and we have kind of a, a pretty high expectation how they behave. So I think, I think that's translating back. Um, but also, you know, we, we open a restaurant on one high school and we've got a doggy daycare on the other. That's a, a functioning district business, you know, for our animal science center. So this is just kind of something that we do. Um, and um, we're, we're hoping that, you know, we can continue to expand the integration of what community in schools looks like. Um, and even more than that, you know, the hands-on experiences that our kids can get. And it's, it, it's beginning to translate back after a year. You know, I, I don't know if you remember the story. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm like trying to remember because I know I wrote it somewhere, but I can't remember. And this is the epitome of it. I was in Norway and there was a class there and they wrote a book together as a class. It was an English class. And they wrote this book. They went tour. They went speak on it or spoke on it. So I went to actually, I was there speaking and I went and saw the school. And what was really interesting to me was um, they, it was like a, it was like a very different structure of building. They actually had like a classroom, but then there was like a, a, a conjoined room with windows and you saw the teachers and they were like talking to students individually. It's very like relaxed, very chill. I, I remember saying like, how did you, how did you do this? Like, how did you get to this point? And they said, well, we, you know, in Norway, we're expected to teach curriculum certain amount of minutes you know per semester right and what we've done is that we actually have our kids they'll have for example math all day they'll have science all day and mondays are math day whatever so nobody said that they had to do it like 
an hour a day, five times a week. They just said we have to do curriculum. So we actually said, here's the constraint. The only thing that kids got every single day was physical education. So we want daily movement. So that would give, you know, provide teachers like a, a prep period to do this. And so it just kind of created, you know, something totally different. And my first question was, how were your math teachers? Now, I don't know why I thought that because I had this very traditional, like teach, you know, for a little bit, give some time to do some practice, get some homework, come back, repeat kind of thing. So the math teachers were adamantly against it. They did not want to teach math to the same group of kids for the entire day. And now those same math teachers actually will not leave the school. They don't want to go back to what it was because they kind of, they had their own vision of how math was taught, but when yeah. they were actually kind of had to like, were forced to change, they, it would just became way more, you know, meaningful and, you know, useful to how they actually taught. So they couldn't go back to the same structure. So like that, when I, when you're telling the story, it's like, Hey, here's this constraint, but nobody's saying we can't do these things. Nobody's saying we right. can't do these things. So like that, that was like one of the most eye opening things to me. I think that really inspired, you know, a lot of my thinking today, just seeing that. Cause they're like, yeah, nobody's cause why are we teaching five times a week? And there's people who are listening to this right now. who are like, well, I want to teach, you know, one hour a day, you know, five times a week. But is it because it's better or because that's what you just know? And I think that sometimes people are just like, I want to hold on to what we've always done, but also innovation, but also like this, right? You, you see a lot of classes are like, these are really great things, but we're within this 45 minute structure. I'm like, can you change the structure? And it's like, nah, we don't want to change the structure. Well, why not? Like, why don't you do this too, right? Yeah. So I saw the impact on what it did with students. That was what the most important thing is like, does this actually change the opportunity? So I guess my last question on this, how, how has this improved learning, you know, for students? And it like kind of obvious, you know, as I'm listening to you, but like, you know, what has changed for the experience of students in this and how is it actually beneficial to them? Not only like in the future, but I think right now, I think that really, really matters to me. Cause a lot of times it's like, we're getting kids ready and for the real world. I'm like, well, actually they live in the real world right now. So, how does, what does that look like for them? Like, how are they benefiting from the practice today? Yeah. You know, so many things just came to my head as you're talking through that. First off is I always go back to, you know, Richard DeFore. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the quotes he said is, you know, one of the things we get so tied down with as educators is that time is, 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 is something that controls us. But, right. but he flipped it on his head and he said, no, time's actually a variable we control. We just never look at it that way, you know? And so like this facility doesn't have bells, you know, kids can move about and go wherever they need to go to, to make it happen. And, um, but the longer term impact that we really want this facility to have is, um, is probably multifaceted, but, but mainly that our kids have a successful future. And, and to do that, um, you know, we can prepare any kid to get an automotive certification, teach them to cut hair. We can, man, create some great veterinarians, but even at the best content level possible they're going to walk out and eventually potentially have to run a business or they're going to have to work within a larger organization and so we've we've created this parallel pathway um, that we push actually all the way down now in our organization uh, to kindergarten um, and it's kind of an entrepreneurial parallel pathway for every career for every student and for every future uh, so that they're really focused on um, to the point where we really created a fifth core course in our mid-level grades uh, for these future ready skills where they're focused on things like, you know, you know, personal and business finance and, uh, or financial fluency or, mm. uh, you know, communication, collaboration, um, you know, marketing, how to advertise, how to order, how to stock. And so, so whether these students are getting direct alignment to what their future career will be, I don't know. Um, I hope so, but I changed my mind five times. I'm sure you did too, as to what you wanted to do. But what we do know is there's some consistent things that they need um, that are not in any state standard around that I can see. And they're definitely not written into textbooks. And it's all of these future ready skills, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial skill sets that that are vital to, to their success, whether it's any career that they choose or, or the one that hadn't been created yet. So that's the impact I think we're having right now. Um, we're actually putting something into play that I think we all believe in and talk about as educators, but it's actually happening and we're getting to see it. And it's an emphasis for our community. I love this. The, 
there's a, I, I, I challenge us to, and I think there's a little bit of balance of both, but we focus on one more than the other is a lot of school districts will have their like 2030 plan or their, you know, yeah, right. your plan and stuff like that too. And I'm like, your kids right now don't care about your 10 year plan. Like they don't yeah. care about it. The most important thing is how do you actually help kids be ready for whatever comes their way 10 years from now? And it, you know, it's not saying you shouldn't plan for the future or anything like this, but it's like really developing kids into credible learners that no matter what comes their way, they'll be able to figure it out. And I think that's, you know, what you're doing in your district and 40 and what a, what a blessing that I even get referenced even a little bit in this process. So I'm like a little disappointed. It's not like the George Crow center. <laughs> yeah, just we kidding. gave that name away, honestly, to Keith Bell. He's our <laughs> state representative. So, right. <laughs> but we'll, we'll name the annex after you, George, if that'll work. I don't know what that is, but I'll take it. I'll take it's it. A, we'll expand it. How about that? Maybe like, a, maybe like a side bathroom or something. I don't know. It'd be nice. Yeah, right? we'll, it'll be a box. Don't worry. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah. But listen, anyone who's listening, you can have Justin. You'll see the link down uh, to the OC down uh, below. I, I'm looking forward because I know we're going to be working together, you know, more coming up soon. So make sure you connect with Justin. This is the reality of all of this stuff is that if you, if you want to make it happen, you can. And Justin is the epitome of that. Not only him, but his, his entire community, which are absolutely amazing. So thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for all that you do to really push the boundaries. And I hope people are listening to this and they're saying like, hey, we can create, you know, what we want right now like nobody's gonna do it for us we gotta do it ourselves and i think that that to me is my the biggest takeaway from listening to you absolutely it's good for kids there's a way there's a path to do it love it even within the constraints we live in i love it love it have a wonderful day everyone take care